Animation World Presenting. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this liquid text animation. I'll be using Blender version 2.73. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu, select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. Next, right-click on the cube to make sure that it's selected, and then delete it by pressing X. Now let's add some text. So press Shift-A and select Text. I'll zoom in to see it better. To make the text stand up, we'll rotate it on the X axis. So press R, then X, then 90, then Enter. To edit the text, press Tab to enter Edit Mode. Now use the Backspace key to delete the text and enter in your own text. Now press Tab to return to Object Mode. Next, let's add some thickness to the text. So click on the Object Data button. I'm going to use an extrude value of 0.1. Now let's bevel the edges by entering a bevel depth value. I'm going to use 0 0.02. I'm also going to set the resolution to 3 to round out the beveled edges. We're going to be using dynamic paint to create the moving water effect, so we need to convert the text into a mesh. To do that, press Alt-C and select Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. Now we'll switch to wireframe view so that we can see how the text is constructed. You'll notice that the geometry is not uniform. The curved portions of the text have more geometry than the straight portions. So we're going to apply a Remesh modifier. To do that, click the Object Modifiers button. Then click Add Modifier and select Remesh. Since the text is made up of disconnected letters, we need to remove the check mark that's next to Remove Disconnected Pieces. This will allow the Remesh modifier to be applied to all of the letters. Next, increase the resolution by increasing the octree depth. You can see that the geometry is more uniform now. I'm going to increase the octree depth value to 8. Then press the Apply button. Now I'll switch back to Solid View. If you look at the edges here, you'll notice that they're not smooth. So make sure that the Tools tab is selected, and then press the Smooth button. This makes the edges look better, but we can make them even smoother. So press Tab to enter Edit Mode, and then press A once or twice until everything is selected. Then click the Smooth Vertex button and enter a value of 10 here to smooth the mesh 10 times. This will add smoothing to the mesh and add a little rounding to flat surfaces. Now press Tab to return to Object Mode. Now let's set up the ball that will be moving through the text. So press Shift-A and select Mesh, and then UV Sphere. Next, we'll add more geometry to the sphere and smooth it out. So click the Add Modifier button and select Subdivision Surface. Set both the View and Render Subdivision values to 2. Then click the Smooth button. Now scale the sphere down in size by pressing S, then 0.1, then Enter. Next, we're going to animate the position of the sphere. The length of the animation is going to be 120 frames long, so set the end frame value to 120. Then make sure the current frame number is set to 1. To make it easier to position the sphere, switch to orthographic mode by pressing 5 on the number pad. Then press 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. Now press G to move the sphere and drag it to the left side of the text, about halfway between the top and bottom of the W. Press the left mouse button to drop it into place. Now press 3 on the number pad to switch to right side view. Then drag the sphere until its front surface is just a little bit in front of the text. Now press 1 on the number pad to switch back to front view. Now we'll set a keyframe to make this the position of the sphere at frame 1. So press I and select Location. Now if I move the time cursor, you can see that there is a yellow line at frame 1, which means that a keyframe has been set for that frame. Next, set the frame number to 40. Then drag the sphere to the right side of the text. Then press I and select Location again. This will set a keyframe at frame 40. Now if I set the frame number to 1 and press the Play button, you can see the sphere move through the text. 
Now let's add a floor for the text to sit on. So press Shift A and select Mesh and then Plane. Position the floor under the bottom of the text at the center. Then scale it up in size by pressing S, then 2, then Enter. Then press 3 on the number pad to switch to right side view and drag the floor to the center of the text if it's not there already. Here's what the scene looks like now. This is a good time to save what I have so far, so from the File menu, I'll select Save As. I'm going to name it watertext.blend. Now let's set the material for the floor, so click on the Material button. Then click New. Now come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Then click the Use Nodes button. Keep the Diffuse Surface Type and click here to set the color. I'm going to use a gray color. To see what this looks like, open the Viewport Shading menu and select Rendered. I'm going to light the scene with a white background color. To do this, click on the World button and set the color to white. Now let's set the material for the text. So right click on the text to select it. Then click the Material button, and then click the New button. Then set the surface type to glass. If you don't see the glass shader, you may need to scroll to bring it into view. Next, click here to set the color. If you want to use the same color that I'm using, then click the hex button and enter CCDBE7. Now let's set the material for the sphere. So right click on it to select it, and then click New. Keep the diffuse surface type and click here to set the color. If you want to use the same color that I'm using, then enter 9C2300. Now let's set up dynamic paint to create a moving water effect. To use dynamic paint, objects are set up as canvases and brushes. In our case, the text will be a canvas and the sphere will be a brush. Let's set up the text first, so switch to Solid View. Then right click on the text to select it. Then click on the Physics button. You may need to resize this panel to bring the Physics button into view. Now click on the Dynamic Paint button. Make sure the Canvas button is selected and click Add Canvas. These values set the start and end frames that will be used for the dynamic paint. Make sure that they are set to the same values that are set down here for the animation frames. Next, open the Dynamic Paint Advanced section if it's not already open. There are different surface types that can be selected. Since we want the text to look like water, select Waves. We can also set a damping value which controls how long the waves will last. The lower the number, the longer the waves will last. You might want to experiment with this value, but I found that 0 .07 works well for this project. Next, let's set up the sphere, so right click on it to select it. Then click the Dynamic Paint button. Next, click the Brush button and then click Add Brush. We can just keep all of the default values. Now let's try it out. So set the frame number to 1, and press the play button. As the sphere moves through the text, it creates waves. Next, let's set up the camera view. So press 0 on the number pad. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the properties panel and put a check mark next to lock camera to view. Then press N again to close the properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. So now I'll set up the view that I want to use. Now let's set up some rendering options. So click on the Render button. Then open the Sampling section. I'm going to set the number of render samples to 100. The larger this value is, the better the final animation will look, but the longer it will take to render. Since we're going to be rendering 120 frames, I'm going to keep this value pretty low to help minimize the rendering time. 
Now go to the Output section. This is where you set the directory where your animation will be saved. On my computer, the contents of this default temp directory are deleted when Blender closes, so be sure and select a different directory. To do that, click on this button and select a directory. Next, click here to set the file format. There are multiple movie formats that you can choose from. I'm going to use OGG Theora. Now we're ready to render the animation, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save the project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. To render the animation, click on the Animation button. If you want to abort the rendering before it's finished, then press the Escape key. Since this is going to take a while, I'm going to pause the video until it's done. The animation is done rendering now, and this is the final frame. It took my computer about 30 minutes to render. If you want to return to the 3D view, you can click this button and select 3D view. To view the animation, go to the Render menu and click on Play Rendered Animation, or you can press Ctrl F11. The animation will play through to the end and then start back at the beginning again. If you open up Windows Explorer or something equivalent, you can navigate to the directory where you saved the movie. Now assuming that you have a video player that will play the movie format that you used, you can now play your new movie. I've set up this player to repeat the video in a loop so that it will keep playing. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.